wonderful God, by His grace I'll make it. We'd like to welcome all of those who's watching us on Ustream today. We are here to worship God. We are here to praise His name. We are here to lift up His banner. Thank you for being here. Now we have a lot of folk to pray about. Many of them are listed in the bulletin. Some of their pictures are even there. We want to pray for them. And we want to pray for this service today. More importantly, we have come here to worship God. That's what it's all about. We come into His presence. Would you stand all over the congregation? And would you ask God to touch those who are sick? They're listed in the bulletin. Hey, God already knows. Father in heaven, we love you this morning. Blessed be the name of Yeshua. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I adore you. Oh, you're the great I Am. You're Yahweh. You're Jehovah. And we come here, Father, just to say thank you for creating the heavens and the earth. Thank you for creating us that we could worship you and magnify your holy name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, with this congregation, I worship you. I worship you. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Thank you, God. Heal those who need that touch. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Get your pocket books out. Get your bill folds in your hand. Borrow about a hundred dollars for eternity. If you've borrowed for that long, you probably won't have to pay it back. But anyway, let's worship God in our giving today. He said, bring it to the storehouse. Worship God. Father, I thank you for these tithe and offerings that's come to your storehouse. God bless those who have blessed you. And now let these funds be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. Because we want to fulfill the mandate that you have placed upon us. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Isn't it wonderful when your wife calls you over and says, I love you? I, I mean, that's good. That's, that's, that's good. I love her too. But anyway, we are so grateful this morning to have all of you who are visiting with us. And I want our ushers to get the visitor's cards out if you would. And we would love to give everyone a visitor's card. We want that because when we have a mail out that we're having something special, we can let you know what's going on. And would you please fill it out for us? And we are wanting to update all of our names and addresses. If you filled out one before, if you haven't done it recently, would you do it again? And then not only that, 
uh, it would give me something to go by when I'm hungry and when I want to invite myself. <laughs> uh, well, well, no, we don't do that last part, but it's a good idea anyway. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. We have a wonderful service this morning. The praise team's going to be uh, singing, and then we have the prayers that Jesus prayed. I want you to know they are powerful, and we have three of our own that's going to be doing that this morning. Uh, uh, Brother Frank Dobson, my wife Donna, and Brother Dwayne, they are presenting the three prayers that Jesus prayed. And then we have a dedication this morning. We're going to dedicate Mason to the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? All right, worship with the praise team. If you'll stand with us this morning. Would you stand, everybody, and worship?
you really won't have to turn over in your Bibles to them, but if you want to, that's good. If you want to take your phone out, if you're connected to internet, you can read along with us there as well. I have asked these who are on the platform this morning if they would be presenting the prayers of Jesus today. I want you to know Jesus was a praying Savior. Jesus prayed much. He prayed in the morning. He prayed at noon. He prayed in the evening, sometimes all night. <clears throat> Jesus prayed. He prayed in the synagogue. He prayed in the wilderness. He prayed in the mountains. He prayed in the garden. And I never shall forget the times that I read where he prayed in that garden prior to his crucifixion until the perspiration dropped off of him like water and out of his pores came forth it appeared his blood and dropped upon the ground. He did it for you and you and you and he did it for me. I never prayed like that. Oh, I've prayed until perspiration has popped but I've never prayed like Jesus did. Oh, but I love him with a passion. Pay close attention because this is the sermon today. What we're presenting. This entire chapter of, of, of John 17. Is red letter edition. This is Jesus himself. Praying for himself. Praying for the disciples. And then praying for all of us. I will be coming up right before each one speaks. Donna's going to come and she's going to do the prayer that Jesus prayed for himself. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I had that wrong. Brother Frank is coming and he is going to give to us the prayer that Jesus prayed for himself. That lets us know we need to pray for ourselves, right? Listen tentatively, Brother Frank. John 17, 1 through 5. Jesus spoke these words, lifting up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son also may glorify you. Hallelujah as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. <laughs> and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, <laughs> and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. Yes. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, Glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. The prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples, Donna. Oh, Father, glorify your word this morning. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Yes. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I come forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Yes. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Hallelujah. And all mine are yours, 
and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep them through your name, those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost, except that son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they were not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Hallelujah. That they also may be sanctified by the truth. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now Christ prays for all believers. That you, 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 and me. The Dwight's coming. Could we all stand, please? I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Hallelujah. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may, may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Hallelujah. That the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold the glory which you have given me. For you love me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and I will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. Would you just thank God for those prayers that Jesus prayed for us all over this building. Would you just worship Him? He loves us with a passion, my dear friend. Magnify His name. Hallelujah. Father, thank You for those prayers You have prayed. God, that You prayed for us. You are interested in our going through this life with victory. Victory today is mine because we are in you and you are in us. And you've already prayed for us, Father. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You can go. This morning about 5 o'clock, my husband and I were reading those words together. Powerful words. Powerful, powerful words. The Word of God is stronger. He said that heaven and earth 
shall pass away, but not one word will pass. Not one word will pass. I pray our pastor has called us. Our church, our general church has called us to 40 days of seeking God. We're on day three today, and I trust that you are seeking God's face. I've been married to this man 51 years. I do love him, but I had to remind him of something. Don't let him kid you. I've been married to him 51 years, but I've never seen him make an appeal, and I've never seen him as burdened, and I've never seen him as troubled, and I have never seen him seek God to the extent that he's doing. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. And folks, I'm going to tell you this morning, we can go on and continue to believe that things are going to be like they are going to be, but they're not. You and I are standing on the threshold of losing our liberties. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. My sister was talking to one of her younger physicians. I was talking to someone about our new medical program that's coming into effect. I said, where, where do you get a copy of this? Where do you find out? I'm hearing so many things. And this administrator told me, said, that thing is 2,000 pages long. I don't think anyone really knows how it's going to affect us. And as my sister shared with me as she was talking to her doctor, she said, I, he said, I don't know how much it's going to really affect you, Linda, at your age. But he said, I'll tell you this, it's going to affect people of my age. And it's going to affect my children greatly. I love this United States of America. I'm so proud to be an American. I choose this over living anywhere else in the world if I had a choice or a chance. And I believe you feel the same way. But church, our pastor is calling us in a desperate hour for prayer. Let's not let, let him down. But most of all, Let's not let God down. Pray for God's forgiveness. Pray for his forgiveness over this nation. Pray for forgiveness of your own sins. Our day one talked, well, had us to take a look at ourselves. And I don't know, I found one or two things that I had to ask him to forgive me for. But let's pray. If you love your country, if you love your family, if you love your children, if you love that job that you have, if you love that, you, that nice home that you live in, let's pray and seek God. I don't know if it's too late for revival. We're praying for revival. We're praying for a move, a restoration in our country. I don't know. When God passes judgment, his judgment is passed. But I also know that he's a God of mercy. And he's a God of love. It grieves me to see how they're putting his name down. Some of the scriptures that we read on, on yesterday, I believe, tells us what happens when we put the name of God down. Let's pray. Let's seek his face. Would you join me in prayer this morning? And would you dedicate yourself? Would you reach out? I just love for an encouragement to this man, and I'd love to have you hold your hand up if you're joining us, but I won't do that. But I'm trusting that your relationship with God is deep, and your concern is deep, that you'll forget about the comforts. You'll forget, I know jobs are important. Families are important. Social life is important. Those are important part of our lives, but this is more important. And I'm going to ask you to stand with me in honor of his word and in honor of what we're doing. And let's ask God to bless and to keep and to protect 
and to forgive the United States of America. Would you stand? Oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we come to you in the name Thank of your you, Son, Father. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for those strong Hallelujah. prayers that you talked to the Father yes, about my for Lord. me, Lord. Yes. Thank you for your Blessed word. Blessed be the name of Yeshua. Thank you for your word that is true. Blessed be the now, name Lord, of as Christ. a people, as a church, Hallelujah. we call upon your name this morning for our oh, country. Give us revival. We thank give you for the liberties. I have great grown up. Awakening, I've had a good God, life, we Lord. Need it I've had a good life, Lord, and I thank you for that life. But, Lord, we need you now. We call upon you to have mercy upon us. Yes, my Forgive Father. us of Hallelujah. our sins. Forgive us of our sins. We're so comfortable. God, I get so comfortable in doing Would the little do things I morning, do, the social games I play, the, so the times I have around Thank a table Jesus. eating with my friends and my church family. I get so comfortable in all of that. But I need to remember that I need you yes, more than anything. I need you more than anything. Now, Father, yes, bless Spirit. this country. Yes. Forgive us, Lord. But Give us revival. The name of Jesus. Father, I Hallelujah. pray for the pastors. Hallelujah, the hallelujah, pastors hallelujah. Standing before their congregation. Yes, we do. Help Lord. them to we call their you. church to you. prayer. Help them to call their church to prayer, Lord. Oh, Father, for our children's sake, Jesus, for my daughter God, and my son's sake, I seek you and I ask you to forgive us, Lord. Oh, Father, oh, Father, Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father, Holy Father. Holy Father. We thank you and we praise you and we glorify you for all you've done. Holy Father, Ooh, touch God. us. Yes, God, touch God. our voices. Yes, touch our hearts. Yes, Help us God. to witness, Lord. Yes, Help these Spirit. crosses that we're wearing as a small church. Help that to be as a witness, Lord, to those. Thank you for the privilege of voting, Lord. Father, direct this election. Thank you, God, direct us as we vote. God, Thank teach you, us and Father. talk to us as we vote. And Hallelujah. let us Thank walk you, in the direction that you would have us to walk. Oh, Holy Father, Holy Father, Oh, Holy Father, your son Jesus came. He yes, came Lord. to redeem us, and we have taken that precious blood of Jesus. And now, Lord, we are taught, we're saying that it's just not important. The world is trying to tell us there's a multiplicity of religions and that we don't really, and we're not no longer a Christian Thank nation. You. But, Father, we honor you. We glorify you. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for our school teachers. I pray, God, for them as they teach in their class. I pray for Hallelujah. the principals of Thank the high you, schools. Jesus. I pray for the principals of yes, the schools. I pray for the Board of Education yes, of these Holy counties Spirit. that are around me. Lord, I pray for my, our governor. I pray, Lord, for the House yes, of Representatives. God. I pray for the Lord, sinners. we're praying for a I great pray, awakening. God, Give I it to pray, us, Lord. Yes, I pray for that In great Jesus awakening, name. Father. Oh, Father, move on our politicians. Move on those in authority. Oh, Father, I pray for them. I pray for those that are over us, Lord. Oh, you have taught us in your word that we pray for them so that we might live in Thank peace. You, I pray for Israel today. I pray yes, for Lord. your country, Israel. I pray for your people, Israel. Oh, God, keep them safe. Do you see this danger? You see this danger that's just at their doorstep. Yes, you see Lord. how they're surrounded, Lord, by yes, enemies. God. But they have you, oh, Father. And when they God. have you, they have everything. God, keep them safe. God, touch their prime minister. Touch those in their government and let them make wise and helpful decisions. God, touch our president. Help him to make the wise decision, Lord. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank we you, pray for your people, Lord. We bring them before you today. Oh, we're your people. We are called by your name. We have the emblem of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ written on our heart. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take control of our lives. 
take control of our families. Let our families come back to you. Let our families come back to you. Father, let there be peace in our homes. You see those that are struggling, Father, but let oh, the yes. peace of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ be there. Oh, we intercede this morning. We take this time, Father, to intercede for our families and to ask Thank you to you move. Jesus. You see our sons and you see our daughters. Oh, Father, you see that the hour is near. It's at hand. Your son Jesus is soon returning, and we want to be ready to meet you. As a body of believers, we want to be ready to meet you. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that when that trumpet sounds and when Jesus says, come up hither, that not a person in this building will be lost, but they'll be ready, looking and waiting and watching for your son's return. Oh, Father, we believe you. We believe you, Father. We linger before you. We linger before you today, asking you from the bottom of our hearts to have mercy upon us, to have mercy upon us, to have mercy upon us. Show us your glory. Let your name be glorified. Let the name of your son Jesus be glorified. Let it be lifted up to the nations. Oh, Holy Father. Oh, Holy Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we pray, Lord, even so, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And amen and amen and amen and amen. What a sacredness is in this service today. How powerful. God is and we're privileged to have him come and meet with us here we sing Jesus is coming soon we sing other songs about Jesus is coming again I believe soon now he's going to be saying here I am I've arrived I'm ready to take you to heaven where you'll dwell with me. Oh, wow, this is powerful. We do have some books. If you haven't received a devotional book like she showed to you, we want you to have a book. And uh, we have some on the platform. And our ushers can serve you or somebody will give you one so that you can follow along in here with us. Uh, this evening in the service, uh, yes, uh, if you want to do that, Dan. This evening in the service, we will be... Uh, I want everybody to bring your books with you tonight. Would you do that? Everybody that has one of these books, come to church tonight and bring it with you. Now, you get to take it back home. We're not going to collect them back up. So, so uh, we want you to have these books. Uh I want you to pray for uh, Dalton and Betsy. They have a death in the family. This is Betsy's aunt, Bessie's aunt. So they're having a funeral tomorrow. So would you pray for them? They're still in Maine. Then after that, they'll be coming back. Well, it's wonderful for Mason to come today and bring Four generations with him. That, that's not bad, is it? I want to thank Mason for that. I mean, he's got a whole lot of pull. That's right, Mason. You have more pull than I do. I like that. Thank you all for coming. This is an exciting time to dedicate children to God. I must remind us that Jesus said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. God loves children. He is so excited that Mason is here today. We have some other children. They're over at Children's Ministry. They're over in the Summerall building. If some of you didn't know we had 
children's church. We do. We have workers over there as well. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, thank you for coming to to uh, uh, Mason's dedication to the Lord today. And uh, I'll tell you what, probably Vasco and Jean did not see clearly how this would be today. But if you look at them, then they count the generations that come down. It's five. But if you start with the family, if you start with uh, Scott and Amanda, then you will discover that there are four generations that they influence. Boy, that is something to think about. It's quite a bit that God is holding us responsible for as parents. So I know we're here to dedicate Mason, but in reality, we're dedicating parents because they have a tremendous responsibility given to them by God. I've been there, you've been there. And we have a mandate from him that we are to train up a child in which they should go. And we are to give them the biblical truths. I want to give you a couple of things from the Word of God. Uh, there's so much in Scripture that I won't have time to get into it. But I love to think in these times about Elkanah and his wife Hannah. You can get the story in the book of First Samuel. The Bible tells us that Hannah was barren. She was not able to have children. She wanted children. Hannah means graciousness. And this precious lady was so much wanting to have a child that she went to the tabernacle and going into the tabernacle, she found her a place to pray. And she prayed, but her lips didn't move. You know, our lips don't always have to move when we pray. I've prayed that way, haven't you? Sometimes silent prayer is a wonderful way to pray. In my times of prayer, I love to just be silent. I've asked God for things. He may have some instructions or orders for me. And I want to give him as much time as he needs. But she was prayerful. And uh, Eli, he was the high priest in those days. And he was sitting uh, in a chair at the entrance of the tabernacle. And, and actually, while Don and I were in Israel a couple of uh, years ago, year before last, we went to a site where they had one of their synagogues. And uh, at the entrance of that synagogue, there was a chair. And, and it was sitting up high. And, and it was a big chair. It was wide. And, and, and that's where they sat. You remember that chair? And, and we had groups that were all in that tabernacle. There were some walls intact. And there were some, or synagogue. And, and, and there was the foundation. And, and here was this chair sitting there that was there when they built it. And, and, and I climbed up in that chair and I sat down and, and I know what Eli could see because sitting in that chair and I looked over, there wasn't any chairs in the place. 
but 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 you could say you know possibly where there was an uh, an altar that she was kneeling. She didn't say anything. Eli noticed that she did not have moving lips, and he said to her, he said, "You're drunk. You've been drinking too much." And she said. Oh, no, no, my Lord. She said, I haven't touched anything. She said, I'm a, a, a woman sincere before God. And I've asked Him to grant my petition. And you know, Eli, Eli saw that she was sincere. And Eli, the high priest, he... he he, he simply, uh, uh, graciously, graciously said to her, Woman, he said, uh, May the God of Israel, you go, and may the God of Israel grant to you your petition. Well, he didn't say, may he grant it. Let me back up. He said, may the God of Israel grant your petition. Go and receive it. That's, that's, that's paraphrasing. And did you know, she went and God blessed her with a child. And she had told God, she said, God, if you will bless me with this child, I'll lend him back to you. I, I, he'll be yours. He'll be dedicated to you. And she taught him in the fear of the Lord. She taught him to respect Yahweh and to worship Him. And then after he was weaned and after her days of purification, she took him to Eli. And she said, Eli, I'm lending him to God. And he grew up in the house of the Lord. And you know the story how that he was growing up and then Jehovah spoke to him one night and said, Samuel. He thought it was Eli. He ran and said, here I am. He said, oh, go back, son. I didn't call you. He went back and, Eli. Run to Eli. No, I didn't call you. Go back. But Eli was wise at this point. He said, if that voice speaks again, you say, here am I, Lord. And God made Samuel a judge of Israel. And it was Samuel that anointed the head of the first king of Israel. Saul. And it was Samuel that anointed David's head when God chose him to be the king of Israel and rejected Saul. You see, we don't know when that child will grow up and be another Samuel. We don't know if that child will grow up and be another Billy Graham. Or be an outstanding man of God such as Wigglesworth. I was quoting him last night. A Jonathan Edwards. We, we never know. But we should bring them up and teach them. And, and then I want to give you uh, uh, the New Testament. The Bible said that God sent His Son. They, they in... in uh, Actually, God and, and, and Jesus had a discussion prior to His coming. And they were in agreement that Jesus was going to come and He was going to be the supreme sacrifice that would make way for human, for His creation to come into His kingdom and dwell with Him forever. Oh, God accepted sacrifices, but that was only a type. There had to be a perfect sacrifice. 
It had to be God's Son. No one else would be worthy to offer themselves. Because the Bible said, not one upon the earth is perfect. Only God is perfect. Jesus, He's God. He was perfect. And when Jesus was born, you know the story. After He was born and 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 after uh, uh, He was weaned and after the days of Mary's purification, then they took Jesus to the temple. They took Him there to give Him to God, to dedicate Him. And, and, and this is what they would do. So, so Jesus, Joseph and Mary took Him there, and, and, and there was uh, Simeon. Simeon the prophet was there. And, and when they entered, the Holy Spirit had already spoke to Simeon and said, you will not die until you see the salvation of the Lord. Isn't that powerful? You'll live until you see the salvation of the Lord. Well, I thank God that we're living in an age of the church that many of us will see Jesus alive when He comes back. That's a wonderful thought. But the thought that I'm making here is that Simeon, when he saw Jesus, he knew it was God's Son. And he prophesied as such. And then there was Anna, a, a, a little widow lady. She was 84 years old. And she had she lived with a husband for seven years when she got married. And, and then all the rest of her time, she was a prophetess in the house of the Lord. And she prophesied how that salvation would come through Jesus Christ. And when you see all that happened in this dedication of Jesus Christ. So they come to give their offering. Did you know that when they had dedications in those days, they brought an offering. It was either two turtle doves or two young pigeons. And they would bring this. You know why they did that? Because you see the supreme sacrifice had not yet been offered as an atonement for the sins of humanity. So Mary and Joseph brought alone whatever, two young pigeons or the two young doves, and, and they offered that as an offering. And, and, and my Jesus then, he loved children. You, 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 you know, Jesus wanted them around him. Jesus loved them and he blessed them. And when the disciples said, uh, uh, don't, don't bother, Jesus said, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, uh, they don't bother me. I want to lay my hands on them. I want to I wanna touch them. I want to pray for them. I'm so happy this morning to dedicate Mason and to dedicate his parents. We have a beautiful dedication certificate. And they can look at this, or he can after he gets older, and he can see that we, Scott and Amanda, how we commit ourselves to the Christian nurture of Mason Howe. Entering to this commitment at the Zellwood Church of God as a part of the congregational worship on September the 30th, 2012. And there's a sign. There's a place for the parent to sign there. And I've already put my signature on this. Isn't that wonderful? He can look back on this day and say, I was dedicated to the Lord. I'm going to ask if they would, please, if, if, if they would come 
and, and stand before me this morning with Mason. Scott and, and Amanda, would you come? And, and then I, I, I would like for the grandparent to come. Would you, would you come as well? Uh, the great-grandparent as well, if they can get there. Can, can, can you get up here, Brother Eugene, you and Nancy? Yes, come, come right on up here. Well, look at you. It seems almost yesterday I was as small as you. How time flies, huh? Yes, all right. We, we have the parent here and the grandparent. Boy, isn't this wonderful? This is, this is parable. What do we have here now? One, two, three. Four generations, right? Five. Hey, come on up here. I wanted you here too. I thought I was missing somebody. Hey, Amen. I just want you to know, Vasco, if it wasn't for you and Gene, these guys wouldn't be up here. I've got to thank somebody. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I, I, think, I think we need to give them a round of applause. What, what do you think? <clears throat> I, I feel like I've had a big part in this somehow. Somehow, I married this wonderful couple. And now, here comes another one alone. And if God tarries, then I, I don't know, son, if you're going to get old enough to have a wife. <laughs> but anyway, you'll be with Jesus, and he loves kids. <laughs> We're going to go to Father's house. Amen. I, I, I want to say that uh, this, Scott and Amanda, it's really a parent dedication. Because, yes, we, we present uh, Mason to the Lord. But, but God is depending upon you and upon these grandparents and great-grandparents. He's depending upon all of them to help you in instilling the Word of God into him. And a fine young fella he is. And I'm going to believe that this will happen. You see, God give us all a mandate to go and share the gospel. But he gives parents a mandate for their individual families you are to make sure that he has the best of church of Christian teaching of the doctrines of scripture the best of education you avail him and yourselves to train up that's what the Bible said train up a child in the way that they should go and they will not depart from it thank God I just got to say, Gene, you and Vasco did a good job. Did a good job. I mean, just think, if it wasn't for them, these two guys here, Robert and Eugene, would be, they'd be, they'd be single today. Well, they wouldn't <laughs> even be here. They wouldn't even be here, let on single. Well, anyway, anyway. Hey, buddy, can I hold you? I'm going to, as Simeon, he took Jesus in his arms and he blessed God. W would you stand with me? And I'm going to take Mason in my arms and I want you to thank God for Mason.
I want you to magnify God with me. And then we dedicate him to the Lord. Can I hold you? Thank you, buddy. My Father, we all, let us, let us worship him. Father, we thank you for this child. God, this child was not an accident. Even, even before he was born, you knew him. The scripture says so. Oh, Father, this is a wonderful, wonderful child that you want to bring to heaven to live with you. Oh, Father, someday you will. And I pray, Father, that you would help this family, help this, this parent, God, to train him and to teach him the word and to let him see Christ in them that they can influence him toward righteousness and toward good. Father, I dedicate them and I dedicate Mason to you. I lay hands upon them in the name of Jesus. I lay hands upon Mason in the name of Jesus. Make it so. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I dedicate them all to you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I have already read this dedication certificate and they have to sign it and you can sign it later. God bless you. Yes. Amen. Uh, ushers, would you make sure that you give these that are with us today, give them, get some cards back there. Would you do it? Thank you for coming. Parent, grandparent, great grandparent. Great, great grandparents. <laughs> I, I mean them. Oh, I said great parents. You're not there quite yet. Not quite. Okay. Right. Well, praise the name of the Lord. Didn't God give us a wonderful service? Have you enjoyed His presence? Amen. Don't forget, we want you to bring your books tonight. We're going to be talking out of this book. And we have started on a 40-day journey. Donna has already spoken to you about it. God bless you. Now, Father, thank you for this congregation. Let your face shine upon them as they depart. Let their countenance glow with the love of God. Father, bless their going out and their coming in. Bless us in our fellowship. Bless us in our prayer journey. Help us to stay on course with you throughout the entire time. Give us a great awakening. Give us revival. Give us peace in our nation. In Jesus' name. And as we go, let the words of our mouths, let them be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Shake hands.